So bacteria become resistant to antibiotics by changing their DNA. And change is uncommon, but it's inevitable. And so when we use or misuse antibiotics, what we do is that we select the rare resistant variants so that they overgrow the space within us and around us. And the very drugs that we've designed to eliminate bacteria actually allow superbugs to proliferate. So the picture isn't as clear in the world around us as it is in this giant petri dish that contains antibiotics. But the principles are the same. And most recent projections suggest that about 10 million people may die by 2050 from antimicrobial resistance. And that most of those people will be people that are living in Africa and Asia. Now, in actual fact, the data supporting these projections is actually rather few. Many, many African countries actually don't have surveillance data. A recent WHO surveillance report actually didn't include data from many countries. All the countries that aren't green submitted no data. And so we don't know how bad the problem is. And information about the scale and trajectory of resistance are critical to deciding how we're going to control it. When researchers went to rural Guyana, to understand whether or not there was resistance to the quinolone antibiotics. They predicted that they would not find resistance because the drugs had not been used there. But they did find resistance. And so what the researchers concluded was that the anti-malarial chloroquine was selecting for bacteria that were resistant to the quinolone antibacterials. Now, it is possible to select resistant bacteria using chloroquine in the lab. But the quantities of drug that you need to do that are unlikely to ever be attained in nature. If the Guyana study was actually correct, this has profound implications for the use of quinolones in Africa because chloroquine has been used there for decades. And quinolones are cheap and they're moderately effective and they're the mainstay for treating infections like typhoid fever and tuberculosis. It turns out that at the time the Guyana study was published, there were no data from surveillance systems in malaria endemic areas in Africa. And so we couldn't tell whether the chloroquine selection had, been, uh, uh, had caused quinolone resistance selection. We now know from a research study of ours that resistant bacteria were on the rise in Nigeria, that's in blue, temporarily coincident with, the, with antibacterial quinolone use. So it was not chloroquine doing the selection. But we know this from a research study that was designed to test questions about bacterial evolution. It's just by chance that we happen to have that data and apply it to this important public health problem. We cannot depend on chance research studies to inform health policy. What we need is accessible and routine testing that feeds into robust surveillance systems and allows us to understand how resistance is changing or projected to change. Testing is costly, but not testing fools a very, very expensive resistance crisis, not just in humans who are going to get ill and die of resistant infections, but also in animals, and that has huge agricultural costs. And then there's the risk of a zoonotic infection spreading from animals to humans. The methods that we currently use to measure antimicrobial resistance in surveillance are slow, they aren't that cheap, and they require a lot of facilities that are often not available at remote locations. What we need is faster testing, such as genomic testing, that can even answer retrospective questions. It's currently being used to track MRSA in sports teams in the USA, or to figure out where hospital-acquired infections are coming from in the UK. It should be used to do routine surveillance in Africa. Genomic surveillance will help us to pole vault over the biohazards, perishable reagents, and intricate quality assurance requirements that other testing methods use and that don't allow us to do surveillance more broadly across Africa. And so now is the time to provide African scientists with access to and a knowledge about genomic methods so that they can use genomics for surveillance because knowledge brings assurance and power. Thank you.